Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is me, Apostle Esther. I pray that you are already having an amazing day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It is a choice to rejoice. So God bless you, all of God's amazing people. Thank you so much for coming back for part two. Um, thank you for joining me. I want to thank all of my new subscribers. I want to thank all of my new viewers. Uh, and I want to thank all of you that are sharing my content. We are here every Monday through Friday with fresh content. You already know I am an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. Super excited about the assignment that the Lord has me on. I don't take my assignment lightly um, because I sense that it is uh, one of the call of God, um, that calls of God that is on my life. And I see the fruitfulness of what God is doing through this ministry. So thank you for connecting with me. You know, I'm going to, as always, uh, take a moment to review a couple of my notes. And we are coming right back to share with you what the Lord has shared with us. I'm simply an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ, super excited about this assignment. I'm Apostle Esther, give me a moment, we'll be right back. God bless you. As promised, we are right back. Thank you so much. If you didn't have an opportunity to catch part one, go back to my uh, archives and look for part one, and then this will all connect together. My, my message is always that of faith. I mean, faith is just the foundation of what I believe. Faith is what has carried me. Faith is what has brought me. Faith is what Apostle Chris and I live by. And so I believe that one of the mandates on my life is to teach you what God has taught me um, so that we can grow from glory to glory. So earlier we talked from uh, Hebrews 11, we referenced to verse 1 and verse 6 is the scripture that we highlighted. And I'm going to read that for your hearing. And the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, every time we spend time in the word, we get an illumination of the revelation that brings us to manifestation. And here I just see this that the Bible says that he that cometh to God. So we must make a conscious decision to come to God so that we can have faith and when we have faith, the Bible says that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So we have that accountability. We have that responsibility to seek the Lord. One scripture says, seek the Lord while he may be found. And so we seek him through spending time in his word. I want to look at verse 11. The Bible says, through faith also, Sarah said, Sarah herself received strength. Let me read that again. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to, con to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful in what he had promised. So within herself, Sarah received the word of faith. She gained strength. She conceived and she produced she said within herself, she conceived, she gained strength, and she produced. In other words, she got um, a revelation, she got illumination, and ultimately she received manifestation because she counted God faithful to what he had promised her. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We must all move to a realm in our faith where we see the manifestation of what God is doing in our lives. 
It's awesome to say that I have faith, but your faith needs to be a producing faith. Your faith needs to be a growing faith. Your faith needs to be a faith that manifests what you're believing God for. I often say that Apostle Chris taught us this principle that faith must reach its destiny concerning our lives. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So once we hear the word of faith, once we believe and we receive the word of faith, then we must move on and grow, develop and mature our faith so that we can see our faith produce the intended result in and concerning our lives. I just love the Lord for how he just lays his word out for us to agree with the word and us to see the manifestation in and concerning our lives. I said in the last video that we wanted to look at Isaiah again back to chapter 9 because this year the Lord has said to me that I really want you to know who I am, know my attributes, know what I can do for you, know how I can move in and concerning your life. And so um, I will be referencing to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 a whole lot this year because God has just really begun to speak to me expressly out of this word and I want us to to share that same experience so let's look at verse uh, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father and the Prince of Peace. So when we begin to look at the word of faith that has been dealt us, because the word reminds us that God has dealt every man a measure of faith. When we look at the word that has been dealt us, we must understand that when the child was born and the son was given, that was enough to empower us to overcome every circumstance, every situation concerning our lives. I want to talk about the Messiah as being wonderful because Isaiah said he's wonderful. That means the glory of God, the attribute of God's glory is on our lives. It causes us to shine. It causes us to stand out in our faith. It causes us to move in a realm in a vein that we've never known before because we trust him to be wonderful concerning our lives. We look at him and know that uh, he is, he is, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is um, the divine God. Let me look at my notes right here. There was something that I wanted to, because when we look at him as being the wonderful God, we know that he um, is the word of God. Yes, the word of God. And the word of God is productive. The word of God is intentional. The word of God is purposeful in our lives. So when we look at the attributes of the wonderful God, he's purposeful about that. He is intentional about who he is. He's intentional about allowing his glory to shine and to reflect out of our lives. Do we understand that the Bible lets us to know that the light of God illuminated Paul's life so much that he, uh, uh, through the ministry that was graced on his life, 3,000 souls came to the kingdom because the wonderful counselor was shining, was illuminating through him. So I believe that there is an illumination that comes with this faith walk that God allows things to open up. He allows revelation. He allows manifestation. He allows um, the, the illumination of his word to transfer to, and, and to transform and conform things in our lives so that we can reflect his glory in the earth realm. The wonderful God. Um, it means that God amazes me. That's why I say every day, you know, have an amazing day. And we're God's amazing people. There are good, amazing people in this world. Won't you consider yourself to be one of them? God's wonder amazes me. It amazes me how I can stay in a vein of faith. And God is so wonderful that he honors that. He rewards my faith. He, he allows me uh, to tap into things, to gain things that I would never have 
you know, the concept of gaining or acquiring or achieving because he loves me just that much. He is our wonderful God, the God that amazes us. I, I'm amazed at, you know, sometimes when I'm not feeling well and I begin to move into a realm of faith, the body comes in alignment. The mind comes in alignment. Uh, 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 things that I need God to do come in alignment with this word of faith. So the Bible says that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And that is the wonderful thing about God, that, that, that he rewards us for seeking him. Uh, he rewards us for seeking him. And so his word is so forceful. His word is so productive. His word is so intentional and so purposeful that he rewards us for seeking him. His word says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So God's word again, it is on an assignment concerning our lives. Listen, I take this word of faith seriously. Seriously, there, there, my life, there is no life outside of the word. I hide myself. I hide my life in the word of God because I know what his word is transforming in my life. I know what his word is manifesting in my life. We talked a few Sundays ago about the pinnacle of God's anointing. And so when we move in that place, God will take you from a low place to a spiritually high place in him and let you know that all things are possible to those that believe. Believers believe and believers receive. Without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please him. So believers have to take ownership of our faith Take on, I own up to my faith. My name is attached to my faith. God's name is attached to my faith. So I take ownership of my faith and I'm responsible to study the word of God, to spend time in his word, to see the faith grow and develop the need that I have before him, the petition that I have before him. Now, this is the confidence that we have is that when we take ownership of the word of faith, we can rest most assuredly that God is going to do what he said. The Bible said that he will do the exceeding, the abundant, the above, the above all that I could ever ask, think, or desire. So when I make my petition known unto him, I rest in the confidence of his word that surely it shall be unto me, just like the Lord said. The scripture says there shall be a performance of these things. Why? Because the wonderful God, the God that amazes me, the supernatural God is going to do what I need him to do in and concerning my life. Listen, don't quit on God. Don't give up on God. Implore your faith. Engage your faith. Accelerate. Activate your faith. You know, um, our praise team uh, ministered a, a song uh, many, a few years ago, Faith Come Alive. Faith Come Alive in Me. And I remember sitting in the sanctuary and I felt my faith come alive. Do you not understand that we can encounter things, we can go through things, and it will kill your faith out. We just feel depleted. We feel like nothing is working for us. We lose hope. We lose trust. We lose confidence. But when your faith comes alive, when the word, the Bible says the word of God is quick, it's alive, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. So when we hear that word and the word of God begins to move on the inside of us, it means that our faith has come alive. It means that now we're in that fervent place with God. And as I said on last week, where we can move to a realm of perfection. Perfection means that faith met and reached its destiny and God manifested that thing in and concerning our lives. We must get so committed to this word that we see God's word come alive in every dead area in our lives. You need to prophesy to yourself that my faith is coming alive. My hope is coming alive. I have a new desire to please God. I have a new desire to seek after the things of God. For the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven 
and its righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. So if you're going to go hard after anything this year, you need to go hard after the word of God. You need to go hard after the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And then the Bible says all of these things will be added unto you. You don't need to seek things. You need to seek the, seek the kingdom of God. You need to seek the righteousness of God. You need to seek the gifting of God. You need to seek the ministry of God. Then the Bible says all of these things will be added unto you. I know sometimes we get off track and we start seeking things. We start seeking people. We start seeking um, um, idol gods, but know the the Bible said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. So we seek that that is right before God. We seek that that is in right standing with God. Because the Bible says that righteousness has, has been imputed. That means it's been deposited on the inside of us. And when righteousness is deposited, imputed on the inside of us, we do right by God because we're in right standing with God. And the Bible says that when we're in right standing with him and we're walking upright, the Bible gives us the covenant that there is no good thing that he will withhold from us that walk upright before him. So I want to submit to you on today, are you in right standing with God? It's not hard to get back in alignment. You just say, Lord, forgive me. I just, I arrowed. I got off track. I got off course. I got distracted, but I want to always be in right standing. That's why Sarah said, I can count it for righteousness to the word of God. I can count it to righteousness when God speaks a word over my life. The confidence in that I have in him is that he's going to perform that thing over and concerning my life. So quitting is not an option. Giving up is not an option. Being distracted is not an option. It is in him. I live, I move, I have my being. If I don't move in him, then I may as well not move at all. This is the confidence that I have, that his righteousness has been imputed. It's been deposited on the inside of me. Paul said, when I would to do good, evil was always present, but he had to remind himself, but the son of God, the hope of glory, the I am that I am, the wonderful God, the counselor, the mind. God, the eternal God, the Prince of Peace abides on the inside of me. And when he abides on the inside of me, sin is not an option. Failure is not an option. Quitting is not an option. Why? Because the hope of glory lives on the inside of me. He dwells, he moves in me. He gives me that, uh, that confidence that I can become what I believe. Believers believe and believers receive. Oh, I'm so excited about the word of faith. I'm so excited about Christ, the hope of glory. I'm excited that he lives, he reigns, he rules in my life. Yes, he is like the dew in the morning. He gently rests upon my soul. He gently rests upon my heart and I can trust him. I can trust the word of faith over my life. I can trust that if God said it, and when he said it, that there shall be a performance of these things. When the word of God was released over my life, the Bible says that the world was framed by the word of God. So when the word was released, my world began to be framed. And I'm confident, amen, uh, that he's the master builder <laughs> and he's the finisher of my faith. I'm confident of, of, the, on, of that on today. And I'm excited. I'm so excited. I, I, I'm so excited to know that God loves us just like that. Whatever he said, he will back up his word. He's not a man that he shall lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Shall, if he not said it, shall he not bring it to pass? I challenge you on today to move in another realm in your faith. Don't stay in the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back together again. God wants to make your life brand new. Listen, he did it for me. And I know if he did it, and I know he did, when he did it for me, that's testament enough that he will do it for you. You need to trust him on the day. 
Amen. Lay aside your pride. Lay aside your brokenness. Lay aside your being devastated. If you can't trust man, you can trust God. You can lean and depend on him. The songwriter said, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sink and sand. My hope is built on him. My hope is built on Jesus Christ and his righteousness. It was his blood that made me. It was his blood that saved me. It was his blood that delivered me. That same blood, it's never lost its power. It's still working. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Won't you trust him on today? Won't you trust him that your faith can come alive and you can understand that he really will, he really will reward you for doing what is right by him. Well, you already know I'm Apostle Esther. Super excited about this assignment. I want to thank you for spending this time with me, spending this time in the word. We're in a new year and I am so, I am so super excited about what God is going to be speaking to us on this year as we learn of the attributes, the love of God, his kindness toward us, his promises toward us, his covenant toward us. I'm excited about that. So if you've not subscribed to my channel, this is a great time to do so. I am Apostle Esther. Thank all of you for sharing, liking, and subscribing. My content is released every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Friday is our day of prayer, so we will be praying with the people of God um, on Fridays. But let me pray with you right now. Father, I thank you for every person that is under the sound of my, my voice. I thank you, Lord God, for this ministry. And Lord, we speak to nations on today. We thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. I thank you, Lord God, because believers believe and believers receive. We believe that we're becoming what your word says. I thank you for the transformation that has taken place in my life, that has taken place in Apostle Chris's life. I thank you, Lord God, that we're conforming to your word every day. I thank you, Lord God, that it is not by power nor by might, but it is by your spirit, says the Lord God, that you are transforming us and conforming us to your image and your likeness every day. So, Lord, I just ask that you continue to allow your word to bring forth revelation, illumination, and manifestation. I thank you that your word shall not return void, but it shall accomplish and it shall prosper in the thing where to you sent it. Lord, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that is not saved, wash them in your blood, fill them with your love, forgive them of their sins, and become their Lord and Savior. Thank you for your conviction power. Thank you for your sanctifying power. And thank you for your Holy Ghost fire power that causes us to do the things that please you. Now I thank you, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, it is acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen and amen. Again, thank you so much, all of God's amazing people for joining me on today. We'll be back on tomorrow. I'm Apostle Esther. I'm simply an ambassador, a good news carrier of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have an amazing day. Thank you for joining me. God bless you.